My biggest fear would be when the first comes and I don't get the rent. I found that my tenant had dumped concrete down my toilet. Can you believe Fair Housing fined me $5,000 for that? How do you onboard your tenants? What do you do? I don't even know if I do it right. If you're a landlord, don't just rent, rent perfect. The Rent Perfect Podcast with property expert and private investigator, David Pickrown. I am so excited to be here today hosting. David's here. You see David Pickrown over there. Heather's here with us. She's back. I'm back. We're so happy to have her back. So yeah, we're happy to have you back. Thank you for doing that, Scott. Yeah. Appreciate it. It's always fun to have the three of us together. So it is fun. Before I get too far in, subscribe. We'd love to have you guys subscribe and get this great content we're putting out today. And today we're going to talk about some cool stuff, some fun stuff, I think. So, but I'm before we get started, I just want to talk a little bit about it's it's kind of tax season right now, right? So I'm going through all my financials and stuff, and I'm looking. Well, I thought we were going to have fun, and you bring up tax. I know season. taxes are fun. Oh Come my on. gosh! No, but I'm looking through my like my annual expenditures, <laughs> right? And I and I'm noticing I'm I'm coming up on my my Amazon Prime renewal. Okay. And every year that comes through, I look at it and I'm like. How many movies did I watch? I think I paid Brad Pitt's entire, you know, last year's <laughs> salary. I'm 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 spending, you know, whatever. It's like hundred and fifty dollars a year, and I'm, and I start to analyze and look at that and go, was it really worth it? And then I start looking at my monthlies: Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus, which oh I don't watch, God. right? Yes. Um, and then I start going. I think my kids use this more than I. Anyway, I'm starting to do this analysis on the things that I have, and wondering, is it really worth it? So, you know, my kids come to me all the time. Say, hey, there's this new series on. It's on Apple. It's, it's you know, blah, blah, blah. we got to get it. Yeah. You know, then they watch it, but then my credit card just dings. So I yeah. am right there with you going, you know, I am not the best at turning it on, turning it off, and managing right. that. And I think I think they love somebody like me because they're just like, let's get Pickron's money yep. this month. And he'll not even care about that. Yeah. He'll forget about this. It's underneath it's that going month dollar month. amount that bothers him. Right. Right. Yeah, and I, f- I think I re- ended up paying like $50 to watch a movie. Yeah, no, totally. Which I would never do at the theater, right? But anyways, so it's an interesting it's an interesting dynamic as we kind of look at those things. And, and it's kind of kind of spin into what we're talking about today. So, Heather, almost a year ago, you bought your first rental property. We promised we'd have you back. Yeah, then you, I'm back. Then you had a baby. Yeah. Which is, uh, congratulations again. But now, now it's been almost a year. Can you believe it's been almost a year? Jeez. Yeah, time's crazy. It's, it's gone flying. by fast, but at the same time, I'm like, that was a really, seems like a really long time ago right. that we got our first tenant in there, but it's been going well. I haven't had to think about it much, to be I, honest. I love autopilot. So I remember how much uh, heartburn and anxiety you had, though, as you went into that. So now we're coming up on that renewal process, right? We're almost a year into your lease. So... Do you have any anxiety coming into that 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 moment? Yeah, I hit David up and I'm like, "Hey, my my property is going to be up at a year pretty soon here, so we need to talk." Yeah. <laughs> so that's why we're here. You know, th- what's interesting about it is Heather didn't come to me a month after she rented, 2 months, 3 months, 4 months, 5 months. Why didn't you come to me then about concerns? Yeah, I haven't had any. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, but but it's that's been great. I think that's worth I'm talking so about. Why didn't you have any issues? In the last year, because there are, and we're not saying, you know, every landlord doesn't have issues. We're not saying that some properties have more issues than others. But in your property, why didn't you have any issues? What have you set up? What have you done that's that's put a smile on your face? When you say, hey, I'm a landlord, why are you smiling? Because there's a lot of landlords out there that are like, yeah, I know. I, I don't really like it. Yeah. Well, for us, we were very careful with our rental criteria. We knew the types of qualifications we needed a tenant to have to give us a good experience. You know, they needed to be able to pay us on time. They needed to have the money. And we were patient and we got someone in there that's well qualified. And then my favorite part is we use the online rent pay. So he pays the rent right online. It goes right into our bank account. So we're not dealing with checks and month to month conversations. You know, we've heard from him just a little bit, but overall he pays, we get the money. And so we don't have to think about it. So if you wouldn't have found the right person, right, and you wouldn't have done all that due diligence, would your experience be different? Oh, I know it would be. <laughs> I know it would be because people tried to talk us out of doing this. So yeah. it would have been how they. Well, you they would take think, fo- you yeah. take phone calls every day from people who aren't having. 
the ideal experience, right? Yes, I that's, do. That's and, and you know, we did a bunch of maintenance before we got in there that we knew needed to be done because we didn't want to deal with that during right. the lease. And properties are going to have maintenance. That's normal. But, yeah, we got a, a qualified tenant in there, and he pays on time, and it's been a great experience. So, so, so think how important this tenant is to me, right? I'm like, I'm taking all the credit. Or easy street, and I haven't thought about it a lot, and it's been great. But really, I'm thankful that I found the right tenant because they're the ones that allow me to live the way I do. Mm -hmm. If I would have done my due diligence and I would have moved in anybody, right? Mm -hmm. I couldn't say, "Oh, I've I've done everything to make this easy," because they could make my life heck, you yeah. know. And oh, they could yeah, be absolutely. calling me, and they could be annoying, and they could be. So the reality is, yeah, I take responsibility. I did my due diligence. I put the right person in. But that tenant deserves all the credit when you and I are on easy street over here Absolutely. because we found the right business partner. Mm -hmm. We found the right business partner, and hopefully their life is easy. Oh, and yeah. we're not like knocking on their door. We need to inspect, and we need, and we, you know, hopefully their life's easy, our life's easy, and it just works. So when it works, everybody has a smile on their face. So I'm glad right. to see that your first year, it's worked as planned. Oh, absolutely. If he, if he wasn't happy, we wouldn't be happy. So it really is a, a business partner relationship, and it's working out great. Um, you know, we've had some communications, and it's been good. Perfect. So I'm how, how, often I'm do you go, how often do you go by the house? Well, I actually have driven by a few times because I missed my tree in the front <laughs> yard. <laughs> when we were getting ready to rent it, my husband and I were like, it, needs, it really needs a tree right here. And it, some people wouldn't have invested that, right. but we did. It's just how we are. We're like, we would love this house more if it had this tree right there. We'd wanted it for a while. So I've just been checking in on my tree to say hello. I love Drive that. by and watch just the give leaves it a hug change, give it the hugs. And I trusted him to take care of it. It wasn't maybe the first time it was about that, but I missed my tree. You I just can't it. move a tree. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> but I love that you love your property. And yeah. I know when you when I you hope were, he loves that Yeah, tree. when you were getting ready to lease it, I knew that part of the part of the heartburn was like, I, we love this house. Yeah, we do. It's a good little house. Yeah. And we, ha we actually bought several trees, but some of them are in the backyard, and we didn't okay. go so far to peek in the backyard. But right. checking on the tree in the house. And That's awesome. Yeah. We so you're, I think you're about 60 days out from lease renewal, or at least you're con starting to consider like, okay, our, our one-year lease is up. So what's our next step? Yeah, that's a good question. I'm here to learn. I haven't made up my mind. I have some things I think I want. But what are the options you're tossing around? Um, well, David, what are my options? <laughs> well, I think of, um, we talked about this Netflix and this Hulu and it's tax season and once a year we kind of sit down and some people do it once a month and check their credit card statements. They're a little more, more diligent than, than me, but I do think there is a point you're coming up on it where you sit down and you say, hey, what is my yearly strategy with this property, mm -hmm. right? People always ask me, they say, hey, when is it time to sell? And I said, well, don't ever sell just to sell. Sell if you have another project going on that's mm -hmm. going to make you more money. That's, that's really, for me, when the time is to sell is when there's something else to go do, mm -hmm. not just to put the money in the bank with inflation and losing you know, all that power of the money. So you have to sit back, I think, once a year, and a, and a lease renewal is a good time because you're making decisions to sit back and say, okay, let me analyze my life. What do I want to do for the next year? Do I want to keep that? Do I want to parlay it and go to another property? Uh, are things going really well right now? I kind of set it and forget it, and I kind of like that, and I want that for the next year. Mm -hmm. um, what has the economy done since last year? Is the rents now more in the area? Which is real easy to do. Just go look at realtor.com right. or go look at Zillow and just go look at the rental mm -hmm. rates people are asking. And that'll tell you if you're in the ballpark or not. So last year, you rented it for how much a month? 2000 And do you know how much it's renting this year? Yeah, we've kept an eye on that a little bit. It has gone up a bit for similar houses of the same square footage and, you know, okay. similar. Like 2200 a month, 2500 a month? What is it It at? varies a little bit, and I'm assuming it just depends on, you know, what the houses are like. Sure. But, I mean, I've seen as high as 2450 down okay. to 21 you know, kind of in there. So. so I have a house similar square footage, not too far from yours. I just rented it for 2300 mm -hmm. I probably could have got 2400 but I like to be $100 under market. And some people say, oh, $100, you know, why, why are you giving up that $100? You worked hard for that. You're giving them the $100, you know. Mm -hmm. But I actually like to say I'm a little bit under market because it gives me some power mm -hmm. with my tenants to say, hey, we're a little under market, you know. Let's try to make this work for both of mm -hmm. us. If it doesn't work for both of us, then I'm going to have to go to market. Mm -hmm. 
In other words, you start, you know, tagging me on small things around the house that you could just real quickly fix. Or I could go over there and quickly fix, but I take the time, the drive, you know, the headaches. And I say, hey, treat this like your house. We're under market a little bit and we'll keep it under market. But that is my style. You know, we teach a lot, Heather. Mm -hmm. We just got off a phone call last night with, with New York RIA. They had a lot of people in the room. I always say, if there's 30 landlords in the room, there's 30 different ways to be a landlord. Mm -hmm. So I'm just uh, giving you my kind of style. And uh, my style is not everybody's style. So you're going to have to like say, okay, let me, let me learn from David. Let me learn from Scott. Let me learn. And then let me find Heather's style and what I like to yeah, do. Yeah, I like that. Right. So, um, so I think there's a lot of things to analyze as you get to your one-year mark. So to help you analyze that, I think I would ask, you probably have some expenses coming up on your house. And sometimes we're, we're seen as just gouging people, you know, and, and, you know, rent on that home probably five years ago was $1,300. And now we're going to be asking 2300 It's $1,000 more a month. But here's the reality. Our taxes are going up, Right. You probably have air conditionings or roofs that are going to be need to, need to be replaced in the next five, ten years. You know, you know, you know the value of your property, and so you need to make sure that you're running a business and saying, okay, I've got expenses coming up. I can't spend all this rent that I get in. I've got to start putting it in an account mm -hmm. because I've got stuff coming up, and so you need to. You know, I say under market by a hundred bucks, but you need to maximize your rents because you're going to start hearing from that tenant more if your house isn't being maintained correctly. Mm -hmm. So you're offering rent to its value, but hopefully with that rent, you're also making them have a great experience. Right. Because we talk about wanting them there for five years. You're going to be into your first year, but my goal is five years. So what can I do to help my tenant stay there for five years if I don't have any other plans for the property? Mm -hmm. So it sounds to me like this year you just want to kind of keep it going. That's what I have on. in mind. Uh, you know, we just had the baby, and right. we're busy doing some stuff, so right. we would love it if he stayed longer. <laughs> Absolutely. And so in your mind, you might think, hey, you know, they're getting $2,400 a month in rent, but if you came and said, hey, I've just upped your rent $400, to them that might be a little bit of a shell shock and create kind of – That's crossed my mind right? too. So I've had – so appreciation has gone so high in Arizona and a, a lot of places around the country – I'm trying to slowly bump up my rents on a um, every six months and have them smaller increments just to make it easier for my tenants to pay that rent instead of coming in in one month. I mean, out here we've had landlords call us, you know, hey, I'm raising my rent nine hundred bucks this year. I'm like, um, I mean, your tenants are gonna stay. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of hard. It's a huge increase. It's a huge, huge increase. Well, I think it's, you have to look at the totality of that investment, right? Because you're experiencing, I mean, we're experiencing a massive equity jump yes. in property right now. And so you have to look at the totality and go, okay, I'm, I might only get an extra hundred per month, but I'm, I'm already up 200,000 in equity on the totality of my investment. Yeah. Right. And, th and that has to factor into kind of how do I want to be a landlord? Yeah. And I think my point is, is as we talk about raising rents and going through the re renewal process, we need to keep our tenants in mind because if they leave, that's a four to $5,000 hit. Mm-hmm. To us. So we're like, hey, we're going to raise it $300. That's $3,600 a year that you're going to raise in rents. But you're going to pay 4000 yeah. when the guy says, I can't afford that. So question, would you recommend then, and, and this has crossed my, main, my mind. I mean, either way, you want to probably inspect the property at least once a year, right? I mean, we've been over there a little bit, but not in a while. Yeah, I would inspect it for the mere fact of I want to know what my expenses coming up are going right. to be on the property. Not necessarily... To, to say, I'm going to come see how you're treating my property. Right, just the property in general. Yeah, so so maybe that is your intention to see how are they treating my property. Um, but I would I would really kind of couch it in it. No, I'm just, I'm just, I want to keep a good property for you. And I guess want to Well, and that's what I actually them. really did mean. You right. know, what what maintenance do we need to do? Like, right. what, I mean, it was, it was built in 97. So it's not super old, but it's not super new either. Right. So, I mean... So I have a I have a tenant in one of my homes, been there for I think about twelve years now. Summer time flies so fast. It's summer ten, twelve years. Mm -hmm. And I just replaced a water heater over there and the, the maintenance guy came up to me and he says, Hey, you've got a problem over there. I uh, I couldn't get to the water heater. I had to like like move stuff to the side and, oh and no. create a little trail to get to the water heater. So you probably have a hoarder over there. And that does concern me. But then I think in my mind, 
okay, so do I go up there right now and make this a make this a problem today? Do I blow it up and right. go, okay, this is a problem today? Or do I just put in the back of my head, they pay me rent, they're decent, they take care of the outside of the property, the HOA isn't giving me a whole lot of issues. Mm-hmm. But when I get ready to turn that property, I just know I'm going to have an issue coming up. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't mean today I'm going to make it an issue today. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But now at least you have a heads up. But but after 12 years living at one of my properties and paying a third of my mortgage, I'll refloor and repaint yeah. and get the 1-800-GOT-JUNK over there and fill up a dumpster and, and still feel like I would have done the deal all over again. Mm-hmm. You know, um, What's interesting about that tenant is... They'll never have me come into the house. They fix everything. Hey, a faucet broke. We we fixed it. I mean, mean, you know, it's almost like on autopilot over there. It's kind of an interesting situation. I wouldn't want to move someone in that I knew was a hoarder or was going to put me in that situation. But now that I'm in it, I have to make those decisions on on how I I, uh, how I do the renewal and Mm -hmm. how I do it. And I have them on a 30 day month to month. So if something comes up and, you know, HOA notices start coming in and I start noticing how their collecting of goods is affecting me then I have the ability to get them out fairly quickly. Mm-hmm. So can we talk specifics real quick? Sure. So, and, and I want to couch this with, we're talking about Arizona. We understand and know Arizona law and that we, you know, if you're listening and you're outside of Arizona, we always refer you to talk to your attorneys because laws or rules may be different right. in your place. Or so join your local RIA because yeah, they're always yeah. up on stuff and they can help you and, right. and do that. So Fi- find a resource so that you don't step in the wrong direction, but... Right. Let's let's say I'm doing a month to, uh, a 30 day a month to month. Okay? Mm-hmm. What are some of the the things I need to what are the pitfalls or what are the advantages? Uh you know, I know as Heather's kind of considering yearly, month to month, what, what what are the things we need to look out for and what are the, the uh, really the advantages to us right. as a landlord? So for me, we were talking about creeping up that rent when rents go high really quickly. And if I do a year to year lease and that rent is static for the whole year, then to get them up to rents, I have to make a bigger jump every year if I renew them for a year. Mm -hmm. So right now when the economy is really in the landlord's favor, it's the tenant that wants the year lease. It's them that say, hey, listen, I want $2,000 a month for a year. I don't want three months down the road you making that $2,100 and then three months making that $2,600. So a 30-day for me in this economy, I like it because I can step up $100 maybe two or three times a year. Mm -hmm. Instead of that one time 300 at the end of right. the year lease. And so I like a 30 day right now. It also allows me to kind of say, hey, listen, if you're not happy here, um, you know, we can very much undo this. And the reason I don't care if you're unhappy right now is I've got a line of people waiting to pay me more money, a mm-hmm. line of mm-hmm. them. Right. And I know. So if the economy was different and a ton of houses were for rent and I'm competing to get this and I'm lowering my rent and I'm giving away concessions and I'm giving away free month just to get you to move in. I have a whole different mindset of how I want to set up my leases. So right now with economy being hot, I think a lease is in favor of the tenant, not the landlord. On the other end, when the economy is bad and I'm competing, I want to make sure I'm going to have that place filled for the next 12 months. I'm the one Mm -hmm. who wants the lease. You know, mm-hmm. no matter whether you go a 30 day or a year, you n- still need a lease. You still need to know the rules of the property. Mm-hmm. It's just a 30 day gives you a little bit more flexibility. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you our know? current lease and how it's written, it will go month to month, you know, until one of us either gives notice. Exactly. Of, you know, it going up. So. So I think a good point to make here is the time to think about what you're going to do on your next renewal or your next lease is not the day that that lease is due. It's at least 30 to 60 days prior, depending on your state. Right. So when is your lease come up for a yearly renewal? So it, we go through the end of June. So I'm okay. out of time. I'm just, that's okay. my personality. I like to plan ahead of time. But I love that we get, get ahead of this. Yeah, I'm ahead right. yeah, I mean, it's 10 weeks. 10 weeks goes by. It goes right. by fast. Right. So, so, and so that's what I would recommend. And I, you know, we get clients that call and they're right. doing it. it. The lease is already ending. Like, well, right. check right. your area, but. And most states will allow that lease to continue on a month to month basis when it expires. Mm-hmm. Um, but in Arizona and in most places, uh, 30 day notices, we kind of have to have our agreements made prior to that lease. Are you going to move out or are you staying? And if you stay, what is going to be the rent? And Mm so you can go ahead and ignore doing a whole new lease in Arizona if you want, because that current lease you have is going to extend. You can send out some kind of notice to them saying rent is being raised. Um, and then just make sure that's in writing. So, you know. 
the first month that they make that raised rent, that solidifies that they understood that rent was raised, right? Mm -hmm. But I would definitely, before that, get some kind of email, text, or some kind of notice saying that rent will raise at the time of the, the lease renewal, even if you want to just keep it on a 30-day notice. In addition uh, to the written days. notice, I mean, you know, we'll be in communication with him, but... Well, the 30-day notice that you give is usually if there's no desire to end the tenancy, there's really no reason to give a notice. A notice is pretty much, you know, we're going to need you to leave. Okay. Right. There's a change coming. Yeah, but if there's no yeah. notice, it stays as is. And so your notice needs to be that you will just have a rent increase if you decide gotcha. to um, continue mm -hmm. um, renting with us. And that rate increase will be, you know, $100 more on this date, you know, but you want that 30 days prior. Okay. You can't come in at the day, say the lease renewal is tomorrow. You can't come in right. and say, okay, I raised it a hundred bucks tomorrow. You owe me a hundred dollars more. They need time to say, I accept that. And we're going to continue to stay, or that's too much for us. We're giving you a 30-day notice, and we'll be leaving at the end of our lease. So the communication has to happen now, which so I love. Yeah. So if we talked about it now, and it's more than 30 days, is that bad, or should I wait? No. I Because then no. I like to know, like, maybe we do have a turn. Maybe he's planning on moving, and I don't even know uh, it. Uh, so I know that I will raise rents for most of my tenants that are under their, their mm -hmm. lease rates, right? I'll do that in January. I know for sure January, and then I'll come around and probably do it again in July. But I will tell them three, four, five months ahead of time to say, hey, guys, we don't love to raise rents. We're not here to make your life hard, but just so you can plan for okay. it, each January, your rent will go up $200. And I go way out ahead of time okay. because this is a partnership. Like this is a partnership, right? Mm -hmm. This isn't just me thinking about me. Now, I, I teach not to have these relationships with your tenants where you're friends and you're, but this is a partnership. So, listen, yeah. we, want, we want them healthy mm -hmm. and we want our rent affordable. If it's not affordable, we're going to be fighting every month on cash flow of in their bank account, whether they have the money or not to pay mm -hmm. us rent. So we want to make sure that, that we, we worry about them enough to protect our investment, but we're not close enough to them where we're the people that are paying the rent when right. they don't have it. Yeah, I think, I, mean? I think uh, we talked about earlier a little bit is that communication, professional communication is key. Yeah. You know, we don't, we're not talking we're going to celebrate birthdays together, but that professional communication is key in making this transition and, and that, that uh, renewal or mm -hmm. ending the lease. That, that, that's, that's the most critical part of it. Well, think of our partnership at Rent Perfect, right? I love you. We, we've been working together for a really, really long time, mm -hmm. right? But there's probably a chance you're not coming to me if you need to get your rent paid, right? Our business partnership mm -hmm. doesn't bleed into mm -hmm. your personal finances. Right. Mm -hmm. In fact, that would hurt our business partnership if one of us was constantly coming to the other and just, I need help, I need help. We're all healthy, bringing a healthy relationship to this partnership mm -hmm. at Rent Perfect, And so we run it really well. And so look at that landlord-tenant relationship as a business partnership, you don't want to be responsible for their finances in life, but you still need to make the partnership work. Mm -hmm. yeah. So hopefully that makes sense. Yeah. yeah, I have a lot to think about now. But yeah, I think it. I yeah. know what we're going to do, but we'll talk about it. Um, well, yeah. I want to I wanna pick your brain on what's going through your head. So you're at 2,000 now. Y the market's about 2,400. What is, after talking a little bit, what is your gut feeling telling you? Um, well, depending. I mean, I... Part of me now is not really wanting to go into a full year. Maybe if he was wanting to sign another lease, maybe go six months so that we could potentially raise the rent a little bit more right. after that six months. Um, I want to give him notice ahead of time that the, the rent is going to go up, but I want to give him more than 30 days just so he has a heads up. He's been great to us, so we want right. to be great to him. And then see. I want to see what he wants to do. Maybe he... Maybe he's going to give his notice. I would like to know that ahead of time, so have so that conversation Absolutely. Sooner. Love it. The communication is key there, and I like your thinking there, too. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that you're going to go wrong either way right now with this market the way it is. Mm -hmm. um, I think if you go a year's lease, you're just going to have a bigger bump and a harder conversation to have when that next year le lease renewal comes. Mm -hmm. If you can just kind of bump it up casually, yeah. I think you'll have a better chance of them staying for five years, if that's what you want. Yeah. Yep. To do. I mean, he's been great. We're going to go see the property, see my tree. Awesome. Got to see the tree, see how, you know, he let me know that the, I've asked him about the tree. Right. He let me know <laughs> that the, the leaves were coming in. I was thrilled about that. 
So right so now, Heather, you know, you're kind of looking in the rearview mirror a little bit, taking care of the partnerships that you've created over the last year. Now you've got to turn and say, what partnerships am I looking for into the future? Mm -hmm. If you're going to grow your portfolio. Oh, right? yeah. And we're so we definitely want to do that. So Rent Perfect has helped you kind of maintain it, keep it in the rearview mirror. You know, and now you need to jump as an investor, not a landlord, not a property manager. Now an investor, you have to look forward as an investor and say, how am I going to grow my portfolio? Mm -hmm. You know, so I love the future is kind of investing and in the river mirror is kind of property managing. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? Yeah, yep. absolutely. So. We have that in mind. And and I know each property stands alone. And but it, I mean, that will play a part in the right. decision that we make. So absolutely. Good time to well, assess. It's a good time to mm -hmm. own. It's a hard time to find deals, but I can tell you if you look hard enough and you have enough good relationships out there, deals will still come to you even in a tough investment market. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's amazing to me. Even last night I get a deal and sometimes I can't turn down a deal. You know, yeah. I kind of like it. <laughs> You're addicted like, to that? Yeah, I'm kind of <laughs> like, yeah, don't show it's me this. It's like it's like the next door neighbors has puppies and they bring them over and say, would you yeah. like yeah. one of our puppies? It's kind of like when you throw a property in front of me, I'm kind of like... Oh, I like that. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but anyways, when you're ready, we're ready to make some yeah, suggestions. No, I, we're yeah. excited. Uh, Chris and I are already talking that up and trying to get our plan. And now I really want to go through all my subscription services <laughs> and assess those as well. I'm like, where can I save money? Because that's yeah. what we're at right now. We got to increase our income and cut our. See, yeah. I got to increase my rent or stop my Netflix and Hulu payment. <laughs> yep. um, Sorry, yeah. to my tenant. Yeah. Netflix went up. So you're. No, yeah. Yeah. it's not about that. It's. It's yeah. more about life is getting more expensive. For well, Heather, years, so. thanks so much. We'd love to have you back maybe in like three months when we when you have some resolution to this. Yeah, for sure. But thanks for coming in, David. Thanks for sharing your expertise. No problem. And a rent perfect nation. Until next time, continue to rent perfect. <laughs>